Hello to everyone that's tuning in. My name is Yesenia. I'm with NCN's training team here in California, and I'm just here to send love for uh, Pride Month 2020 to all of our LGBTQ 2S plus community and um, and the families you know that they're connected to. Um, you know, I also identify within that community, and I was thinking of one one thing that I wish I would have heard. You know, growing growing up and growing into my identity. Um, you know, one is is that uh, we don't always need to know and figure it out, right? As far as um, how we identify, um, it, there's always a pressure to uh, to label who it is that we are and where do we fall within that spectrum of LGBTQ plus. Um, and just know you don't have to have it figured out. We're always shifting. We're always transforming into different people. And so, you know, I just urge yourself to uh, to love yourself. You know, to to find a group of people, a tribe. You know, who will support you in that journey. And so, just know that you're loved, that you're supported, and that you're a blessing. Peace. Hey, familia, alafia, peace. This is Sergio. I wanted to take a moment to offer a reflection on Pride Month. You know, LGBTQ Pride Month started 50 years ago out of a group of LGBTQ folks, really led by trans women of color, who were fighting to stand up for their own dignity, to be respected for their authentic sacred selves. Over the past 50 years, we've had a lot of wins in the LGBT community. There's been a lot of progress and there's still a lot more work to do. Um, and in my journey, I wanna share with you a little bit um, from my story. Um, in 1989, I was 12 years old and I made the decision to come to terms with who I was and part of that being my sexuality. I was a pretty young age to share that with my family and my community. And being a child of Mexican immigrants, they had a hard time understanding what that was, didn't have the language or the words to really express their feelings and fears about it. Um, but most importantly, they just didn't even know what support looked like at that point in time. You know, growing up as an adolescent into adulthood, I've had a lot of conversations with my family and my parents and had some struggles and some challenging times, but we struggled through it. And the principal reason because it was because they had just absolute love for me and they recognized my dignity of who I was and who I am. And one of the other things that I also was challenged with is that I didn't have any elders who were other queer Chicano men to guide me, to help prepare me as to what I was an experience as a queer young person or adult. And the, one of the, the primary reasons for that is because at that point in time, it was the epitome of the HIV AIDS pandemic and an entire generation of you know Chicano and black queer men um, fell victims to this virus and died. And in the absence of those elders, I had to look to other folks to look to offer me support and guidance. And like in many families and in, in many culturas around the world, when parents can't give the children um, the love and respect and care that they need, tios and tias and abuelitas and abuelitos and other señoras step in and offer that love and care for that child. And for me and my experience, NCN was able to do that. And with participating in circulos with NCN the past 15 years, I had other tios and maestros who stepped in and recognized who I was and let me know that the circulo I was a part of was always welcome for me. And they accepted and affirmed my authentic, sacred self. So my message to you all is those of you who may be coming from the LGBTQ experience, know that even if you don't have an elder, there are other family members, there are other relatives who you could look to and will step in to offer you that love and support. And to individuals who may not be LGBTQ, but have other young people, other people in their lives that need that tío or tía or abuelo to step in and recognize, affirm, and celebrate the sacred being that is you and respecting and loving other people for who they are, who their authentic self is. With that, I thank you very much. Have a wonderful Pride season. Thank you. Hi, to all our relations, 
as we sit here celebrating Pride Month, it's important for us as proud parents to let you know how much we love you, how much we cherish you, and that we're here to stand by you and remind you every day of your sacredness, of how worthy you are of living your best life, and what a blessing you've been to us. We love you, we embrace you, and we stand by you. Thank you so much. When my sister Teresa came out to our family of nine over 40 years ago, I don't remember any shift or change within our family. Teresa was close to 19 years old and we all knew and loved her as Teresa. Over the years we met her girlfriends, some we liked and some we didn't, but through it all Teresa was Teresa. That may sound funny, but Teresa being gay was not the defining part of our sister. We knew her to be intelligent, strong in belief, socially motivated towards social justice, and incredibly funny. She was the best sister and we all loved her deeply. Eventually, Teresa met Lori and fell in love and committed to her for over 20 years. Together, they raised a daughter, my niece, Alicia. In fact, in 2014, they were one of the few fortunate couples, couples to be legally married in Michigan. We were all raised Catholic, but Teresa stayed away from the church for some time, but returned to her faith later in life. She returned in large part because she found a parish and a pastor who accepted her, Lori and Alicia, openly. She was quick to profess that God is love, and the God she knew, and the God we all should know, would not reject some people because of who they love. My sister believed that God knows no distinction between his children. While others use God to support their bigotry, Teresa believed God is ours and we all are his. Our dear sister passed away four years ago and there is not one day that passes that I don't think about her and often talk with her. She was a dominant force in my life and I thank God for her. So when my daughter came out to me as a senior in high school seven years ago, I don't remember a shift or change within my family. Maricela is Maricela, and she is intelligent, strong in belief, socially moved towards social justice, and incredibly funny, very much like a Thea. And I thank God every day, the God that is love, for my daughter. And I take enormous pride in her as my daughter. Hi everybody, my name is Miguel Fernando Suna. Um, I'm here as a proud ally uh, to not only my friends and family members who I have that are members of the LGBTQ2S plus community, but I, I feel that I sit here even more so as an ally, as, as, as a brother of someone who is who recognizes as a lesbian Chicana. Um, and I sit here and I remember what it was like when I was sitting there with my sister who was only 13 years old telling me that she was lesbian and I remember the only thing I wanted her to know was that I love her and that she was still sacred and she was still important and valued and I think that the, the one thing I've only ever been able to see as, as she continues to live her life and prosper is that she continues to grow her voice grows and and she makes sure that no matter what she does she is always for the people and she's constantly wanting to use her voice to speak up. Now, as I sit here as an individual who, who is an ally, not just to her, but to all my friends and, and, and other loved ones, um, I'm humbled and I'm proud to be able to, to introduce her in, in this next piece within this video because she wrote a poem that, that we're gonna be sharing and she spoke it and, and I know that those words are true. And without further ado, I, I do introduce Adelita Beatriz Osuna and, and I hope that her words resonate with you the same way they resonated with me. Thank you and, and happy Pride 2020. A secret pride. To the warriors who cannot show the real them. To the people who have been scared and frightened into the closet. To the people who have had to fake who they are all these years. I see you. I accept you. And I love you for who you really are. To the people who created the closet in the first place. To the people who made it so the closet was the only safe place a person a part of the community had. To the people who made them unsafe and scared in their own home. Screw you. 
to the people who had had a secret pride during this month because they fear the results of coming out of the safety of their closet. To the people who have no one to lean back on because your family no longer claims you. To the people who just wish for a hug, to be accepted, to have someone say, I love and accept you. I'm proud of who you are. To have someone celebrate with you and give you everything that has a rainbow on it. To have someone celebrate you and appreciate what makes you unique. I'm here. And if I could, I would give you a big hug and tell you that you're going to get through all the pain you have had to go through. I would tell you that you're stronger than you think because you have had to go through so much just to be the real you. I would tell you that you don't have to come out of the closet if you're not ready. But that rainbow party is waiting for you when you do. Maybe not from the people you thought but the ones that truly love you the most and will cherish the real you. To those that have a secret pride this month, I see you, I accept you, I wish you the best in life, and I'm excited for the day we get to celebrate the real you.